Okay, yeah, so um, I guess uh, the last thing to do would be three milliliters of sodium hydroxide. So let's see how we would work that out. So you have to calculate how much sodium hydroxide we have, but we've got 0.05 moles per liter sodium hydroxide times. Oh, I didn't make it. In, I didn't make it in per liters. 0 0.003 liters of sodium hydroxide. Yeah, I just did. So you get that the concentration of the sodium hydroxide, the number of moles of sodium hydroxide was this. So you just uh, so we should end up with uh, five decimal places. One, two, three, four, five. So that would give us these numbers in our table. So then we get. You getting an eight there somehow? So, which of these is the limiting reagent now? Oh, now the, the acid is. How much acid are we going to use up? All of it. And how much sodium hydroxide are we going to use up? This gives us good practice with decimal points anyway. If we can handle this, we should be in really good shape with decimal points. This is probably a little bit more calculations than you would have to do on the test, but um, you'd have to, you have to know how to do all these, but you wouldn't have to do as many of these in one problem. But it, it's still a good review. So let's see, this is going to end up with, uh, so this is 0 0.00015 minus 0 0.00010, which is 0 0.0005. So this is what we have left over. And then we also have made 0 0.001 weak base. So do you have to like, factor in both of them? We're not going to have to do that because the strong base is much more important than the weak base. And it's a little, all these cases are a little bit tricky. Uh, but uh, obviously the strong base is, uh, so now we're going to get some hydroxide from the strong base and some from the weak base. But the amount we're going to get from the strong base is going to completely outweigh what we're going to get from the weak base. So we, don't, we can totally pay, uh, not even pay attention to this number here. So I can just find the pOH. That's right. So this is 5 times 10 to the negative. Yeah.
What did you get as your answer? The P is just between 9 and 10. 5 plus 9 is 14, and 4 plus 10 is 14. <clears throat> Unfortunately, at this point in the tutoring session, the student and I both made a mistake, which we didn't catch during the session. So we actually came up with the wrong answer. Uh, so why, why don't we uh, step back here and see uh, whether you can catch what's the mistake that we made during the tutoring session. So here's the work that we'd already done so far in uh, the session. And we've just gotten a number of point, uh, well, we, we ended up with 0 0.00005 sodium hydroxide uh, after the reaction between the sodium hydroxide and the acetic acid. And uh, now we're going to allow that sodium hydroxide to dissociate. And it's uh, going to dissociate and provide us with 0 0.00005 of hydroxide because this is a strong base this dissociation reaction will go to completion and uh, so far so good and then the student and I said that hydroxide concentration is 5 times 10 to the negative fifth and then we use this to find the POH uh, but right at this point here we're making a mistake uh, you might want to pause the video here and see if you can identify what, what, what mistake are we making well the mistake that we're making is that remember that these numbers in the in the uh, reactions in the start change end tables those were in moles they were not concentrations in molarity why did we have to work in moles because we were combining two different solutions we were combining the one milliliter solution of the acetic acid and the three milliliter solution of the sodium hydroxide well there, there's no when you're combining two different solutions you can't just work with your original concentrations because the concentrations will be different once the solutions are combined because the volume will be different instead probably the most straightforward thing to do is the thing we did in the tutoring session and change everything into moles uh, that's where these numbers came from here we figured out that one milliliter of 0.1 molar acetic acid would represent 0 0.0001 moles of acetic acid and 0.05 molar sodium hydroxide in a volume of 3 milliliters would represent 0 0.00015 moles not molar of sodium hydroxide so all these numbers here in the start change end tables represent moles well what that means then is that we have this number down here mislabeled this does not represent the concentration of hydroxide. Remember that the convention is that when you put a species in brackets, when we put a species in brackets like this, this only refers to concentrations in molars. When we put something in brackets, we should be using units of molars, but this isn't in molars, it's in moles. So we should simply have written it as 0 0.00005 moles of hydroxide and not labeled it as the concentration of hydroxide. However, in order to figure out the pOH, you really do need to know the concentration of hydroxide in molars. So that was the step that the student and I skipped. We forgot to translate back from moles into molars. Well, why don't we go ahead and do that now? We have 5 times 10 to the negative fifth moles of hydroxide. That's what we figured out we'd gotten from the start change end table. But what volume are we dealing with? Well, remember that we were titrating 1 milliliter of the acid and in this example, we had added 3 milliliters total of the base. Well, if we put 3 milliliters in 1 milliliter, we'd end up with 4 milliliters. 4 milliliters. The, the most convenient way to now work with this is to remember that milli means 10 to the negative 3. So instead of milliliters, we can say this is 4 
times 10 to the negative 3 liters. Why am I putting things into liters? Because remember that our goal is to get everything in terms of capital M, molar. And molar means moles per liter.